Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Hello there and welcome back to Biblical Foundations for Africa, coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe and to understand the Bible for themselves. And then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma and it's my absolute privilege to be your companion as we discover the treasures of God's word. Now here at Biblical Foundations for Africa, we firmly believe that the power of the word of God is in the doing of it. So once a week, we host a special conversation called Practically Speaking, where we try to answer one question from one of our listeners on how we can apply the word of God to our lives practically so to speak. Today I'll be chatting once again to Mama Barbara Ngala, who is a renowned writer and publisher in her native country of Zimbabwe. She's been writing and publishing for over 40 years. She wrote her very first published book in 1975 and hasn't stopped ever since. Welcome back, Mama Ngala, and thanks once again for making time to chat to us today. Thank you. Right, Mama, today we don't really have a question from one of our listeners, but we want to talk about how we can leave a legacy through writing. And I can't think of any better person to encourage us in this matter than you. So why don't you start off by telling us why it's important to you that we, as biblical Christians in Africa, learn to write and to publish our works? Well, Norma, uh, writing is very, very important, um... Let me tell you, way, way back when we were little girls, we used to play a game. We'd all stand in a saddle, and then one person would whisper a message to the person next to her, mm -hmm. and then round and round it goes. Right. <laughs> the interesting thing was, uh, by the time the message gets to the last person, it's completely changed from what the first person had whispered. Right. Uh, that that goes to show that um, if things are not documented, a thing, something which is passed on by word of mouth, mm -hmm. you can never be certain that in 10 years, 20 years down the line, it will still be the same message. Right. We Africans in particular are an oral traditions people. Mm -hmm. We like passing on stories by word of mouth. Right. That's what our grandparents used to do, our gogos and kulus. They passed on messages. They told stories, uh, stories of um, wars that happened, of kings of the past and chiefs of the past, of what used to happen through word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And they told folk stories, of course, through word of mouth. But unless that is documented, there is the process of changing. The message changes and keeps changing. Mm. By the, I mean, 50 years down the line, it's a completely different... Right, it's a completely uh, it's different message. ...information mm. altogether. Mm -hmm. I, I have great admiration for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Their history is awesome. Why is that? Um, look at the Bible that we use as Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, it documents how the world, when the world started... Um, then we see how people lived in the Old Testament, uh, coming over to the New Testament. Right. You know, we, we, we use the Bible mm -hmm. uh, for our faith, to strengthen our faith, and we believe in God. Mm. Uh, and it's really awesome to see how it all started, right, with uh, Adam and Eve. That's what we believe, Noah, and then um, all the prophets, and then coming on to the New Testament when mm. Jesus was born, when he became flesh. We wouldn't If have they this. hadn't documented all that, wouldn't have this precious Bible right. that we use. Um, it, it all started with Moses uh, being called onto the mountain to write the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. that he gave out to the children of Israel mm -hmm. from God himself. And then we see... Um, Many prophets, many priests, they, they continue to write, you know, um, whatever came from God, they wrote it, 
or the rotten scrolls. And um, I remember a story of one of the kings, King uh, Josiah, I think it was, when he reigned. And then the scrolls were discovered, the word of God, which they were no longer practicing, and he brings right. it along. And he reads, if it hadn't been documented, people would have just carried on doing the wrong thing. Exactly. And then we, we, we come down to, um, you know, only in the 15th century, 15th century, 16th century, there's the great Shakespeare who wrote uh, a lot of uh, books, mm. which we, we used in schools. They continue to use them. Uh, in school, some of his classical um, plays, mm -hmm. you know, that's uh, if, if he had, if he hadn't put it down in writing, um, wouldn't be using that. All those stories which show that people don't really change, you know. So that's an excellent exam. You've given us some excellent examples of mm -hmm. um, people that or cultures that have documented their history. Mm -hmm. So, please, can you tell us what types of works? you have taken part in in the past and why they're so important well uh, i started off uh, writing fiction in my mother tongue ndevele mm -hmm. of late though i've also become a publisher in my own right and um I, I tend to focus on i'd like to focus on biographies uh motivational stories you know things like devotionals I'll, I'll give you an example of um, the first biography that we we, we, we produced at Radiant Publishing. Um, my sister, who is well-traveled, she, she used to travel in a work situation with her husband to the USA, where she saw how families wrote family histories. Right. And then she came back to encourage that. Mm -hmm. And so when, when we decided to, to write the biography of our own mother. Wow. She's the one who wrote, and I mean, I, I helped also in the process of writing. Wow. And um, we did it mainly for our family. Yes. For ourselves, our children, and our children's children. That's right, yes. This biography was titled Golide Koko Koko Lived, Loved, and Left a Legacy. Wonderful. And uh, an excerpt from the blurb right at the back of the book says, she was a prayer warrior full of grace. Perhaps nobody in the eyes of the world, but definitely more than somebody to her children. Mm. She did not have glory and splendor of kings and queens, the fame of politicians, the prestige of business magnates, nor the popularity of artists. But Golide Kokokoko lived a full life, loved deeply and unconditionally and left a wonderful legacy to her children and the children's children. Wow, that's a story and, worth uh, reading. It, it, really, from this story, the feedback that we've had, we had meant it only for the family. Wow. But those people who happened to get hold of a copy and read it, the feedback has been awesome. So not just family members have read this book, but outsiders have read it and been encouraged. Yes, because uh, when we published it, every family member got their own copy including a little baby who's not even a year old. They got their own copy. Wow. Then the rest of the copies we, we, we sold to a few people. There were very few copies, about 100 copies. And they quickly sold out. Actually, in uh, Radiant Publishing, we've uh, recently published um, a biography of one of the key leaders in our country. We're also looking at uh, doing uh, church history, our own church in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Yes. Uh, because as a church, we need to know our children's children, those who will come, need to know where they came from, where the church came from, where, where it started. And um, That's quite unique because I've, I've hardly ever heard of churches writing their own history. Yes, missionaries used to, to, to do it for us because our own church came from uh, the United States, came in with missionaries who set up mission schools, but missionaries have gone back to their home mm -hmm. and we need to carry on the legacy. Yes. We need to document our own histories. So even if our churches weren't started by missionaries, we, we, we still need to document That's right. That's where right. our churches come from. Because 100 years down the line, it mightn't be known where, where, how the church started, started, who started it. You know, all that information needs to be documented. That's wonderful. Yeah. And um, our uh, publishing house is also, has also done some devotionals. Mm -hmm. uh, this came about when um, 
I just finished my work with a, a Bible society where we're translating the Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I just got thinking that, um, yes, looking around at how people read the Bible, uh, some people just put in a finger and that's where they read. Mm -hmm. Some people just read on Sundays when they go to church. Exactly. Whereas those who can read English, there are lots of English devotionals in English mm -hmm. to help guide the process of reading, reading the Bible, the Bible. And doing one's uh, morning um, devotionals or, or whenever. But there, there's hardly anything in our local languages. So we, we did do that. Um, it's a very important thing to do, especially for the rural people. Lots of young people like to read in English, they're okay, mm -hmm. but people in the rural areas still read in the vernacular languages. So it's important for us as biblical Christians in Africa to be writing in our own languages. Very, very important. Otherwise, the language dies. Mm -hmm. If it's not documented, it dies. captured and stored somewhere, mm. and people continue using it, mm. uh, as we old folks pass on, Younger folks, you young folks and your children and your children's children need to keep on writing. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, Mama, as we conclude this um, session, can you give us some tips as listeners maybe who are interested in getting started with writing our own family biographies or biographies of other people? Can you give us some tips? What sort of resources should we be looking for and how do we get started in this thing anyway? <laughs> We live in an age uh, when there is so much resource-wise. I mean, you can dig into the into the internet. You can Google up all sorts of things, any information that you want to get. But I would I'd, I'd, um, encourage people just to start with uh, their own families, just documenting who they are. Mm -hmm. Actually, I usually um, make this exercise with young people. I ask them, who is your father? Mm -hmm. And your father's father. Mm -hmm. And your father's father's father. Mm. You know, most of them, some of them don't even know who they are. Who, who, the name, they, they, they don't know the names of their own fathers. Right. The names of their own parents. Sure. They just call them Baba, Mama. Mm. And, and that's it. They mm -hmm. don't know the names. So I encourage them to, to ask their parents to tell them what their names are. Really what the names from. of their parents, you know, their grandparents yes. and their great grandparents. Right. It's it's very important. Yes. That's why I said uh, right at the beginning, I'm very impressed with the Jewish history. Yes. Uh, all that documentation, even when we read in the New Testament when Jesus was born, all that documentation about his his lineage, mm -hmm. you know. So they can start with just their own families. Right, writing your own family history mm -hmm. and family biographies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And for adults, maybe just to write letters to their children, any letters that are written, you know, to, to keep those. Don't destroy those because yes. one day, um, there are times when I've dug up uh, my, the letters that my father used to write me. Wow. Just to see what his handwriting was like, what he used to say. And, um, yeah, I, I hope to pass that on to to my children. And I think they'll be fascinated to see how Grandpa used to write That's and what true. he used to say. That's very mm. true. Well, my friends, I hope you found this helpful. If you'd like a few more tips about how you can get going with your writing or you'd like to learn a little bit more about the publishing house that Mamangala runs, you can log on to www.radiantpublishing.co.za or check out our website where you can find out more details about what we've talked about today. So find us right here every weekday with a new installment of Biblical Foundations for Africa. Feel free to chat to us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time. <laughs>